Wow, that was the Flying Scotsman. Welcome to Partick Hill Station. Hello again, it's Charlie. I'm not quite sure what happened yesterday when I posted the videos, but half of the one video uh, of the read aloud um, didn't load. And uh, I was in a bit of a rush to get out last night as we had a social engagement that I had to attend. So uh, here for your entertainment is the balance of the read aloud, including a review of a couple of model rail supplements. So I hope you enjoy this. Now, I think I'll get through these two and then that will be it for today. So, I stumbled across these some time ago. I think I found them at a model railway show. And I'm just guessing that they preceded um, well, I just can't remember the story behind uh, this as a supplement. It may have came out in the Railway Magazine and this was a supplement stuck in. Uh, oh yeah, Free With Rail, number 275. So in the magazine Rail, you'd find one of these. And then that began uh, the journey for the magazine model model rail, which is an excellent magazine. So Chris Lee is the editor in chief, and at that time Dave Lowry was the editor. Some snippets from the editor about getting the best from ratio plastic models. And there's an article in here. Layout designs. Now, you can easily make these. Um, I have a, a video underway on how, how to do this, at least my interpretation of it. Many guys have done this, uh, but I've, I'm have i doing it my way, right? So you may find that interesting. So you can look forward uh, in the future to seeing that. Um, and some simple shunting arrangements uh, for sidings. And it's all about a portable layout. Uh, with two different type of uh, of shunters. And here they demonstrate uh, scenery techniques and tips with a traditional masking tape uh, method and plaster coated uh, overlap bandage. I'm sure you can still get at your local chemist, drugstore, whatever. Um, probably cheaper than buying the pre-packaged ones. And then they go in with uh, some notes on how to do it. And, you know, a nice result at the end of the day. And locomotives, and in this particular case, he's got from Graham Farish and Engage, <clears throat> Lima Hornby and Backman Double O. And what what they're saying is, they look, it, it, you know, twenty years ago, uh, they looked at least twenty years ago at that time. <clears throat> they look quite good, but you can add to how they look uh, with. A1 models accessory packs. Now they were probably relatively inexpensive at the time, but I'm sure they've gone up in price. 
and you know typically you can cut openings out and put a new grill cover on it or over a fan make it look a bit nicer more realistic I've never done any of that type of work but it sounds interesting I, I might get around to it at some point but it's not high on the list and here's an article on rolling stock techniques and tips and that's what I like about this magazine it does all this stuff for your average modeler who likes to dabble a little bit like I do in how to make things and here a step-by-step -step way of fitting a walkway I mean that's terrific and uh, sort of step-by-step -step procedure and buildings everybody needs buildings so some nice ideas here to complement your layout and your high street you can always change them up and I will be doing that on mine And for me, in, in the 1970s, uh, a couple of Scottish freight yards had workmen's bothies made out of diesel rail bus bodies. One was a part royal vehicle, like the Dapol kit. The scrap box relic had lost most of its chassis. I put some corrugated styrene sheet over the missing windows and added some strip material around the doorway. The doorway was a spare from a plastic house kit. Inside seats and chairs came from a scrap box. I painted it in the original DMU green livery and then weathered it with some rust and dirt matte brown. You could do the same with any old four or six wheel coach for a pre-1970s layout. That's a great idea. Or the foundations of a a demolished building. And you can do it simply with uh, balsa wood embedded in plaster. And they're talking about the details, what makes it really pop. And if you look at my how to build a simple diorama, uh, that's what I was emphasizing. You know, the details, you can really make it pop if you take some time and, and work on details that tell a little story. Yeah, that was interesting. Free with rail number 275. I think I need to dig a bit deeper into my archives because uh, these ones do look familiar. And in this one, in the 283 edition, uh, you got a free kit uh, for a station. So all you have to do is uh, cut that out, stick it onto uh, some card, and there, and, and there you have a a ready-made station building of a modern style and would fit in today. Well, I have this uh, a 37, the EW and S. I picked that up. Um... I might have picked that up in the States when I was down there a year ago. I had to 
fix it, get it running, but that, that was okay. And then here's uh, more on EFE lorries, um, the regional railways 156 Sprinter. I have that in uh, the Strathclyde livery. And electronic control circuits, tracks controls, There's two automatic layout control modules. <coughs> the station stop module consists of electronic circuit ready assembled plus a miniature read switch which is wired into the screw terminals on the circuit board, etc, etc. Yeah, these things are interesting. Uh, help enhance your layout. Masking and spraying. Well, you know, I've done this type of spraying, but I haven't used my airbrush yet, and I should probably give it a go. But that's a good article on it. And there's Inspirations. And there is the very same uh, station building. How about that? You can add some details to it. And here is the methodology and how, how to put that together. And you know, as I said before, I would be very happy to scan uh, those plans for that building and these pages on how to and, and send it to you i mean please don't don't hesitate uh, to ask and I, i'd be more than happy uh, to help out uh, that's what it's all about as far as i'm concerned anyway uh you know i've been on for a reasonable amount of time here and uh i've covered a lot of topics um We'll get to this another time and I will I will dig out some unread uh, magazines uh, for the next one that I do in my Read Aloud series of British Model Railway magazines. You know, and, and as I said, if you like these, yeah, give me the big thumbs up, you know, you know how it works and... Uh, Spread the word. Uh, if people are interested in listening to me, my voice, talking about something that I love and they probably love too, um, yeah, just send it out there. Um, and if you've got any requests, uh, you know, once again, don't hesitate to ask. Just reach out and I can't promise, but I'll have a look through my archives to see what I have and uh and, and do a bit of reading so uh this is charlie mcgowan signing off from partick hill station and look forward to seeing you next time here at the station and or uh you listening to me read one of my favorite magazines hope you enjoyed this bye for now